Recently, we published a couple newsletters that have some charts that will help the user determine on any given day or any given time of day how much cooling and humidity they should be getting from their evaporative cooling pads as well as how much water they're using. I thought I'd take a moment to demonstrate how to use these charts. This is the outside temperature and the humidity last week on a farm where we are testing paper and plastic evaporative cooling pads. And we're going to be showing some graphs today that have to do basically just with the paper pads. The outside temperature from a be between 1230 to 145 was around 92 degrees, and the humidity was around 62%. We take this information, and with this chart, we draw a line up from 92 degrees over from 62% humidity, and we see the chart predicts that the incoming air temperature should be around 83 degrees. On this graph, you can see we did have an incoming air temperature of right around 83 degrees, showing that the chart was pretty, pretty accurate. What about the humidity? 92 degrees, draw a line up. Another one over from 62%. We see the incoming humidity should be around 88%. What did we see? In fact, the humidity was pretty close to that. It was around 86%, which is um, pretty good considering that the accuracy of most humidity sensors is plus or minus 2 or 3 percent. What about water usage? Again, we draw a line up from 92 degrees over from 62 percent humidity. We come up with the water usage per 100,000 CFM should be about 1.75 gallons per uh, minute per 100,000 CFM. The house happened to have 300,000 CFM operating, had all of its fans running. We multiply 3, that's 300,000, times 1.75, and the chart predicts that the pads will be using about 5.25 gallons per minute. One last point um, on this chart. When you look at the temperature and humidity, the incoming temperature and humidity, it looks like the pads were turned off around 1.30, and the temperature started going up, and the humidity started falling. The fact is the pads were actually turned off at 1.15 p.m. and continue to produce essentially the same amount of cooling for 10 minutes, which we've seen on a number of farms, that during hot and humid weather, once a pad is wet, it will continue to produce the same amount of cooling for about 10 minutes. It took a full 30 minutes really for that pad to dry out. The point here is that when we run the pads off of a 10-minute timer, that since it takes longer than 10 minutes for the pads to dry when we turn off the pump, that running them off a 10-minute timer really typically doesn't affect much when it comes to cooling or the humidity produced by a pad system. Now, if you have any other questions about evaporative cooling, we have a number of newsletters at our website, poultryventilation.com, or you can contact me from that web page and um, submit any questions or on this or any other topic that you um, on poultry house environmental control and energy conservation. Thank you.